Welcome to Nomads Nation, where we have put together the best duffel bag review on the web. Our five picks aren't necessarily in chronological order. We just wanted to show you some of the best duffels on the market, explain their pros and cons, so you can figure out which one is best for you. And we're not like making this up as we go. We own and have reviewed and tested every duffel on this list. Each of the duffels we're gonna cover in this guide has their own individual review that goes into further detail. Check the description below and you'll find a link to the individual review there. Let's duffel. First up on the list, the Boundary Supply Aegis Duffel. This is a duffel that's great for somebody looking for a duffel that can do two things. Number one, it can be used as an everyday carry. And number two, it can also be used as a travel companion. So for the everyday carry, it could be used for gym, it could be used for photography, but also given the large capacity, you can totally travel the world on this bad boy for weeks at a time. Boundary Supply is renowned for having a modular ecosystem. So if you own other Boundary Supply products, you can seamlessly move some of the features back and forth between the products. For instance, Boundary Supply's magnetic keyring solution, this works on all of their products. So you just pop it out of here, pop it in a different one. And also Boundary Supply's modular photography gear, like the MK1 seamlessly snaps right into here, as well as their other backpacks. Boundary Supply uses premium materials and has a very sort of adventure-esque sort of aesthetic. And coolest of all, this duffel actually can be used and doubled as a backpack. Simply pop these straps out here, connect them here. And once you connect the straps, you can uh, kaboom, use it also as a backpack. Some of the specs of this bad boy. It's 32 liters of storage. It utilizes YKK water resistant zippers, as well as Fidlock compression buckles. One of which, when you unbuckle, gives you access to a waterproof shoe compartment, which is awesome if you go to the gym. And there are two options available. You have the regular, which comes in at around 170 US dollars. And then you have the X-Pack. That's this bad boy right here, which uses the same exterior materials of sailcloth. And this runs about 210 US dollars. Some quick pros and cons with this guy. Pro number one is gonna be the amazing materials. It's durable, it's rugged, it's going to last a long time. Pro number two is the versatility. Not only can it be carried in multiple ways, but it's also large enough to be a long-term travel pack. And because of this compression element, it can be compressed small enough to be an everyday carry. And pro number three is gonna be simplicity. If you look at this main compartment, there's not a lot going on. This is a true duffel experience. The good old throw your in, take your out, you're good to go. But on the flip side, let's talk about some of the cons. Con number one, gonna be pretty obvious, the lack of a padding on the shoulder strap just me off. Ah! Con number two is going to be these Wujin clips. While they're durable and while they're high quality, they're kind of a to open and close sometimes. Case in point, you just wanna pop it out, but you gotta like two hand it and like push this down and like, ow! But you know, it does work, but it's just, it's just something to be aware of. If you are interested in learning more about the Boundary Supply Aegis Duffel, check out the description. There's a link there and it will show you our full epic review on this bad boy. Next, number two on this list is the Air Capsule Pack. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Aaron, this looks like a backpack. That's because it technically is, but it is a backpack that can also transform into a duffel. Case in point, you pop the straps off, slide them in this little compartment here, attach the duffel strap, and et voila, you have a seamless duffel experience. You got the duffel handle here, duffel shoulder strap here, and if you wanna go into backpack mode, that is also an option. This product is made by Air, and if you watch my videos before, you know that I kind of have a crush on Air products. This is for two reasons. One, they're sleek and sexy looking, but two, they're highly functional and also extremely comfortable. This is not an everyday carry. This is definitely designed for short to longer term travel. But what's really interesting about this carrying experience is as the name infers, it's kind of like a capsule. And if you look right here, you've got this circular opening system, which gives you access to the main compartment. This large crater is not quite a duffel, but it's duffel-esque in the sense that it's just a big old area, throw all your stuff, fly to a new country, 
you're good to go. All right, some specs about this bad boy. Most air products use ballistic nylon, which is this rugged looking yet smooth to the touch exterior material. There are two size options, a 35 liter and a 40 liter. This is the 35. And I love that the entire exterior of the backpack utilizes YKK waterproof zippers. And all these things combined come in at a price tag of around 230 USD. Some pros and cons of this guy. Pro number one for any air product for me is going to be the comfort. When you're in duffel mode, this shoulder strap right here is what I usually say is like the air mattress experience. And that also applies to the back panel when you're in backpack mode. Pro number two is obviously going to be the amazing convenience of going from duffel to backpack. It's the best of both worlds. And with the comforts, I've used this bag personally on many of my travels, pre-COVID. And that comfort really extends to the duffel experience. In fact, I found myself wearing this thing in duffel mode 90% of the time. And that's why I'm including it in this list. But on the flip side, a few cons. Con number one is that the water bottle holder is actually kind of inconvenient when you're in duffel mode. Tab, show them the B-roll. There I am, I'm in Vietnam, I'm walking around and oh, the water bottle has fallen out. Yep, that water bottle took a beating because of this guy. And that's one unfortunate aspect is that if you are in duffel mode, your water bottle is gonna slip right out. Or when you put the bag down, the water bottle is just clanking all over the place. And con number two is that while I do love this quick access pocket on the top, it's a little flimsy. It feels unorganized. I wish that this was nice and tight. I, I don't love the user experience of this part of this duffel pack. If you are interested in learning more about the air capsule pack, Check the description, and there's a full review just waiting for you. Okay, duffel number three is the Peak Design Travel Duffel. Peak Design is renowned for making revolutionary gear for photographers. But truth be told, their products can be used and enjoyed by anybody. Like me, I'm not a photographer. I love Peak Design's gear. Similar to the Boundary Supply Aegis Duffel, this is a duffel that I think is quite okay to use as an everyday carry. It's a bit big. If you only have a few things in your pockets that you're trying to relieve, then this is not gonna be your guy. But if you have a bunch of stuff that you carry on a day-to-day -day basis, this guy can handle it. Peak Design's aesthetic is very sleek, very techy, very like, wow. Is that a word? Like, wow, you get what I'm saying, right? And I actually use this as an everyday carry for a few weeks. And because of the way it sort of like compresses into itself, it means that it's smaller when you don't have too much gear and it expands when you have a lot more gear. Some specs about this duffel. Peak Design uses amazing materials. Whether it's the in-house designed zippers, yeah, they make their own zippers. Or the premium feeling aluminum hardware. It's also important to note this, that Peak Design advertises this, that it can go into backpack mode. And theoretically, it can. But it's not that comfortable, because at the end of the day, you're using these handles as the straps for the backpack. It's just kind of, Okay. For the capacity, it's 35 liters. The materials are all waterproof and the bottom is extra waterproof. No, in case you put it down in a puddle. And this stuff was great because it is a nice middle line between minimalist while also having enough pockets and features to keep you organized. And all that will end up costing you about 130 US dollars. Pros and cons. Pro number one for me is going to be the sleek and sexy look. This is achieved by Peak Design's overall aesthetic, but also just the use of these waterproof materials. They got a nice little shine to them, but also being a little bit matte, it just looks, looks really nice. Pro number two is going to be the comfort. Now, I do not think that these hand handles are comfortable. We'll talk about that in the cons, but this shoulder strap is really comfortable. You got a nice little padding here. This padding is just the right amount of cushion while also being dense and durable. It's a really comfortable wear. And pro number three is gonna be the two quick access pockets in the front. You got this guy right here, and this guy right here. These pockets are great for their functionality because they give you somewhere to store all of your stuff in a way that's very easily accessed. But I got some cons, you're gonna hear them. Are you ready? We're going. Con number one is that while I am ecstatic about the comfort of the shoulder strap, the comfort of these handles isn't too great. Here's why, look at this, you're like, is that a magnet? Is that a magnet pulling these two handles? Yes, it is. The magnet is quite nice because it does keep the handles nice and tidy, keeps them together. But unfortunately, magnets are hard and hard does not equal comfortable. So when you're holding it like this, I find it really uncomfortable. 
And con number two is like, it's advertised as a duffel that can go into backpack mode, which means you're kind of paying a little bit extra for this little feature. And it's a feature that just really doesn't work in my opinion. So I'm paying extra for something that I never use and just the backpack mode, it's not great. If you're interested in learning more about the Peak Design Travel Duffel, check the description, full review down there. You'll love it. Tap catch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number four best duffel bag on our list is the Packed One Duffel. The Packed One Duffel is easily one of the most hyped travel packs on the web. It's marketed as the ultimate travel companion because ultimately it's a duffel that functions and packs like a suitcase. <laughs> Case in point, we're in duffel mode and then you open it up and you're like, whoa, that's a suitcase. This is easily one of the most fascinating products I've ever reviewed. It's too big for an everyday carry, but if you're looking for a duffel that can handle all of your travel gear, this could be as good as it gets. Pack's design is quite interesting. It's got a classy sort of a feel to it. Now I got the blue, which is complemented with brass colored hardware. So it's got like sort of like a 60s vibe to it, a little retro, but like kind of designery almost. It looks quality, but really it's the comfort of this thing and the engineering that take it to the next level for me. The comfort being these hand handles, they got this really cushiony, jelly sort of uh, material in there, and it's just a really nice experience to hold. And the shoulder strap, similar, just got a nice cushioniness to it, and it feels great on your shoulder. But for me, the most important characteristic of this duffel is the fact that it has a dedicated laptop compartment. Go ahead and put your laptop right in there, zip it up, and we have a duffel that has your laptop protected. And if you have clothes on either side, because this is a longer term sort of travel duffel, it's just gonna be really safe. Some of the specs of the Pact One duffel. It's 35 liters. You have three different color options. And what's quite interesting is each color has a different sort of material. So for instance, the blue has a different exterior material and a different interior material than the gray or the black does. The zippers are all YKK, water resistant, not waterproof, but water resistant. And really this bag is so durable, not just because of the materials, but because of just the stitching. Like look at how robust and how strong all of this stitching is all over the bag. This is a duffel that'll last a decade. Let's talk about some pros and some cons of the Pact One duffel. Pro number one, comfort. It's really comfortable. Pro number two is going to be the laptop compartment. And pro number three is gonna be all of the different features and organization. You got pockets here, you got pockets here. So there's external pockets. You got some pockets on this side, you got some mesh compartments here. So there's lots of organization offered in this duffel, which is quite unusual for duffels. But a few cons, this duffel might be over-engineered for some. The user experience can be a little confusing. And at the end of the day, not everybody is looking for this many pockets and features on a duffel. And con number two is gonna be the price. It's a little hefty, 275 USD, ain't cheap. It'll last a long time, but it's a high price point. If you wanna learn more about the Pact One duffel, check the description. We've got a link there to the full review. Okay, now duffel number five on this list is kind of an honorable mention. I wanted to throw it on there because yet again, it's not a true duffel, but God, is it sexy. And for the right person, it could be the perfect duffel pack experience. The Wandered Hexad Access Duffel. But a backpack that is designed in a way that is meant to be carried as a duffel. See the cut in these shoulder straps? This is specifically intended to pop these bad boys together and to hold it in duff mode. And what's so cool about Wandered is they're always trying to innovate. We love all their products. Sometimes they make super simple products like the Wandered Duo, one of our favorite everyday carries, right Tab? This is like the best bag. Tab loves the Wandered Duo. And then sometimes they make backpacks that are really complex. But seriously, this guy has pockets upon pockets and zippers upon zippers and buckles upon buckles. Like it's, so feature heavy, but it could be overkill for a lot of people. It's one of the most feature heavy products that I have ever 
reviewed. Good point, Tab. And this is also an ideal backpack slash duffel for a photographer because you have these side panel access points, which is great for accessing your DSLR in a jiffy. Who says that in a jiffy? Some of the specs. It's a big boy. This is coming in at 45 liters. But for being so big, it still looks kind of sleek and sexy. The exterior materials is a waterproof tarpaulin. It gives it that nice like shine, but it means ain't no water getting into this bad boy, which is why it's so good for photographers. It comes in three different color options, a black, a blue, and a green. And one small nut with Wandered products is that they have these little circular type zipper pulls and I friggin' love them. They're so easy to grab. You can one finger them. It's very rare to be able to one finger a zipper. Some pros and some cons. Pro number one, you sexy. Pro number two is going to be the massive capacity at 45 liters. This is definitely has the potential to be a long-term travel backpack slash duffel. And the last pro is going to be the seamless transition between duffel mode to backpack mode. It's so simple. It's like, hey, I'm in duffel mode. Now I'm in backpack mode. Get okay, see what I just did there? I got some cons too. Con number one, pretty simple, is that it's not simple. It's that this is actually quite a complicated backpack slash duffel. Look at that, oh my God. We got four zippers within like a three inch radius of each other and just, it's just complicated. Con number two is that while I do like the duffel mode, it's not like super comfy. I actually think it's a better backpack than it is a duffel, but it's still a good duffel, but it's definitely a better backpack. In con number three, yet again, we just got so many features that like to get into the actual main compartment, you have to actually undo the compression straps. If you are interested in learning more about the complicated yet fascinating world of the Wandered Hexad Access Duffel, check the description below. We've got a link to a full review. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching our review on the best duffel travel bags. If you are still here, that means you're super interested in getting a duffel, but you're still not quite sure which one to get. That's fine. We're here to help. This is what we're going to do. Exit full screen, smash that like button, and start reading the description. And while you are reading the description, Tab is going to read the first chapter of Animal Farm. So then you have time to read through whatever information you got to read through before YouTube starts that whole autoplay bullshit. So Tab! Bring it in, it's Animal Farm time. Chapter one. Mr. Jones of the Manor Farm had locked the hen houses for the night, but was too drunk to remember to shut the pop... Pop holes. <laughs> With the ring of light from his lantern dancing from side to side, he lurched across the yard, kicked off his boots at the back door, drew himself a last glass of beer from the barrel in the scullery, and made his way up to bed, where Mrs. Joan was already snoring. As soon as the light in the bedroom went out, there was a stirring and fluttering all through the farm buildings. Word had gone round during the day that Old Major, the prize middle white boar, had a strange dream on the previous night and wished to communicate it to the other animals. It had been agreed that they should all meet in the big barn as soon as Mr. Jones was safely out of the way. Old Major, so he was always called, though the name under which he had been exhibited as Wellington Beauty, was so highly regarded on the farm that everyone was quite ready to lose an hour's sleep in order to hear what he had to say. At one end, at one end of the big farm, on a sort of raised platform, Major was already ensconed on his bed of straw under a lantern which hung from a beam. He was 12 years old and had lately grown rather stout, but he was still a majestic looking pig with a wise and benevolent appearance in spite of the fact that his tushes had never been cut. Before long, the other animals began to arrive and make themselves comfortable after the, their different fashions. First came the three dogs, Bluebell, Jesse, and Pincher, and then the pigs who settled down in the straw immediately in front of the platform. 
The hens perched themselves on the window sills. The pigeons fluttered to the top of the rafters. The sheep and cows lay down behind the pigs and began to chew the cud. The two cart horses, Boxer and Clover, came in together, walking very slowly and setting down their vast hairy hoofs with great care, lest there should be some small animal concealed in the straw. Clover was a stout motherly mare approaching middle life, who had never quite gotten her figure back after her fourth foal. Boxer was an enormous beast nearly 18 hands high, as strong as two ordinary horses put together. As a white stripe, a white stripe down his nose gave him a somewhat stupid appearance, and in fact, wasn't, he was not the first-rate intelligence. But he was universally respected for his steadiness of character and tremendous powers of work. After the horses came Muriel, the white goat, and Benjamin, the donkey. Benjamin was the oldest animal on the farm and the worst tempered. He seldom talked and when he did, it was usually to make some cynical remark. For instance, he would say that God had given him a tail to keep the flies off, but that he would sooner have had no tail and no flies. Along, more, what? Alone among the animals on the farm, he never laughed. If asked why, he would say he saw nothing to laugh at. Nevertheless, without openly admitting it, he was a devoted to Boxer. The two of them usually spent their Sundays together in a small paddock beyond the orchard, gazing side by side and never speaking. The two horses had just lain down when a brood of ducklings, which had lost their mother, filed into the barn, cheeping feebly and wandering from side to side to find some place where they would not be trodden on. Clover made a sort of a wall around them with her great foreleg and the ducklings nestled down inside it and promptly fell asleep. At the moment, at the last moment, Molly, the foolish, pretty white mare who also drew Mrs. Mr. Jones's trap producing. He does not give milk, he does not lay eggs, he's too weak to pull the plow, he cannot run fast and cannot catch rabbits. Yet he's lord of the, all the animals. He sets them to work, he gives back to them the bare minimum that will prevent them from starving and the rest he keeps for himself. Our, label till, our labor tills the soil, our dung fertilizes it, and yet there is not one of us that owns more than his bare skin. You cows that I see before me, how many hours, how many thousands of gallons of milk have you given during this year, and what has happened to that milk? We should have been, we should have been breeding up sturdy calves. Each drop of it has gone down the throats of our enemies. And you hens, how many eggs have you laid in the past year? And how many of those eggs ever hatched into chickens? The rest have all gone to market to bring in money for Jones and his men. And you, Clover, where are those four foals you bore? Should have been able to support and pleasure you into your old age. Oh, wait a minute, that did not sound right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think that's enough time for you guys. Um, if you haven't hit the like button yet, then please do. This is a pretty long book. <laughs> I'm going to be here for a while. Um, seriously, if you're still here. <laughs> if you're still here. <laughs> I don't know why. He, still, he went out to take a leak like I 10 did. minutes I ago. Did. Now I'm back and I can't believe this is still happening. So if you're still here, uh, let us know why. <laughs> <laughs> Click on some video down there, like, come on, okay. All right, I'm gonna switch these off. Pie. <laughs>